The early work that found a relationship between beta and returns was actually due to an admitted variables bias. For example, take the theory that longer hair people uh, have sh are, are shorter than, than, than short haired people. Okay, you might look at people and say, oh, that's true. These people have longer hair and they're shorter than these people here. But hey, what's the admitted variable? Gender. I mean, these girls, you know, they have longer hair than these boys. And this is my nice little clip art here. Um, but you see that the relationship between this average of short people and this average of long people is, doesn't hold within the gender. It just holds between the gender. So if you control for gender, there is no relationship between hair and height. And we know that intuitively to be true. There's no relationship between hair and height. The relationship you see between hair and height is solely due to gender. It's an admitted variable. So the theory that hair is related to height is wrong. Similarly, high beta firms have higher returns than low beta firms, but it's solely due to size. So you have uh, small beta firms here with high betas and high returns, and you have large beta firms here with low betas and low returns. And yeah, you know, if you draw a line between, you know, connect the dots and you put a line through them in OLS, you get a positive relationship. But if you control for size and look within these little blobs, you don't see any relationship whatsoever. So it is size that's driving the apparent uh, uh, beta return uh, connection we saw for so many decades. And, and in, it is that sense that, that Fahm and friends showed that beta does not work.